All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how to make a pie chart and a bar chart. So you're going to need the data sets and you can find those on Canvas. So if you go either to the files and you click on data sets, you'll see those there and you can download them. Or if you go to the chapter one um, Canvas pages, there should be links to the data sets on both of those pages. All right, so you'll need this data set. And typically when you open it from Canvas, there's a yellow bar across the top um, where you have to click enable editing. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Um, and then it should have defaulted to this page where it says discipline and percent, but if it didn't, don't worry, we'll, um, I'll show you how to get there in just a second. So this is example seven and it's titled, which majors? So approximately 1.5 million full-time first year students enroll in college and universities in 2013. What did they plan to study? The data on the percents of first year students who plan to major in several disciplines can be found on the chapter one homework spreadsheet on a tab titled majors in Canvas. So I've talked to you a little bit about how to download that file. Once you have that downloaded, it said you wanna look for the tab titled majors. So if you come down here to the bottom, you can see I've kind of highlighted a little bit down here at the bottom, just below where I highlighted, you'll see it says majors. The next one says radio. And if I click on that, I see a little something a little different on the screen. The next one says music and burrs and so on. So each data set that you need for chapter one is in this file. So you only have to download the one file and then you just need to look for the correct tab um, to get the correct data set. So this first one is called majors, and this would be what I would expect. Um, so there's like arts and humanities, business, engineering, education. So that, that seems to fit what I would expect for what I'm doing here. And then the first question says, to what does the data sum? Okay, so they're wanting us to add up all these numbers, which we could certainly do with a calculator. We could pull out a calculator and do that. But we can also have Excel do that for us. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways and don't don't do anything until I show you this last way. Um, uh, and you can do that one with me. I'll show you some ways you can do it, but they're slower and clunkier and not not as as good of an idea as what I'm going to show you. But I'm going to start by putting a row down here that says total and I usually leave a space between my data and where I put the total that way I can just distinguish them. And so if I was adding this on a calculator, I could do 10.6 plus 14.7 and hit enter or equals. In Excel, we do it a little bit backwards. So I put the equal sign in first, and then I could type 10.6 plus 14.7. Okay, and I could add them all up that way. And if I do that, it'll give me a total. Okay. Uh, that it's really easy to make a mistake though, if I was gonna type those all by hand. So maybe um, I can just tell Excel where to go get the number. So now I'll put an equal sign and I'll click on this 10.6 and you'll notice it puts a B2 here. And so the name of that box is B2, right? So after the column and the row. And so it'll take whatever's in that box and substitute it into the formula. So I could do a plus and click on B3 and a plus and click on B4. So I it can definitely sit here and do this. And this should take care of those errors if I mistype something. So this is definitely better than just hand typing each of those numbers. Right? I can hit enter again and it'll add those up. But if I have lots of these to add up, do I really want to sit here and type these all, like click on these one at a time? Not really. So here's the slicker way to do this. And if you're following along on Excel, this is where you want to join me. So I have that equal sign. And another word for adding things up is the word sum. So I'll start typing sum, which is S-U-M. And you'll notice once I start typing, it gives me a whole list of choices. So these are commands that are built into Excel. If you aren't sure what, command, what the command is exactly, um, you can usually guess pretty well and it'll give you a list. And usually you can find what you're looking for on that list. So in this case, I see sum here. If you want to use it from the list, you need to double click on it. Unfortunately, you can't hit enter. It just confuses Excel. So we can either double click on this or I can finish typing the word sum. And then I'll open a parentheses here. And as soon as I open a parentheses, um, Excel recognizes that I've selected sum as my command, and then it tells me how the command works. So it says number one, comma, number two, comma. And so I can put all my numbers in there. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight from this 10.6 all the way down to the 14.9. Okay, so I wanted to add up all of those. You'll notice it put a B2 with a colon and then a B11. Okay, so it's saying take everything from B2 to B11 and add them all up. So B2 plus B3 plus B4 all the way down to B11. If I hit enter, I get 100.1. So it adds up to just a tiny bit more than 100%. Remember for a pie chart, we need that data to add up to 100%. Otherwise, we need to switch from a pie chart to a bar chart. Okay, um, so the question is, is this close enough? And the answer is yes. So the reason it's not exactly 100% is that I bet that these didn't come out equal. So maybe this arts and humanities was really something like 10.66666 all the way out, right? And we usually round that to a seven or something like that. So maybe it was something like that, right? Where, where we did some rounding. So we ended up with a little bit over, a little bit under, and that's okay. So we look at this, we go, yeah, it's super close to 100. These categories are mutually exclusive. So a pie chart is fair game to make here, okay? If it was like 101, then I, that's more than rounding error. You've got something else going on there. Okay, so in order to make the pie chart, we need to get over to the graphs menu. If you look across the top, you have a ribbon of choices. So there's a home ribbon, an insert ribbon, a formulas ribbon. We want the insert ribbon. And what we're going to use are these ones that are uh, kind of in the middle of this ribbon. So we're going to use this one that actually just looks like a, a circle. What I need to do for a categorical variable is I need to highlight the categories and the numbers. Anytime you're making a chart for a categorical variable, you should be highlighting two columns, the categories and the numbers. It's different when you work with a quantitative variable. We'll talk about that uh, next week. But categorically, you need to highlight categories and numbers. I'll click on this pie chart guy, and I just want this very first one, a 2D pie chart. So now I have a pie chart. That's great. Um, Let's change the title here so you can double click on that and we'll call it what majors and you'll notice on the homework that you're supposed to put your initials afterwards so on the classwork it doesn't matter but the homework um, you do need to put your initials on there. Um, mostly because I've caught people um, one person makes the graphs and then they print out 10 copies and everybody turns that copy in. And you're going to be asked to make some graphs on the exam so you do need to do this, this is kind of my way of making sure. You, it's a little harder to just, you know, photocopy the same one 10 times. So put your initials there is what you'll see on the homework. And then there are some choices here. So that's a lot of slices in a pie, um, lots of labels down below. And so um, what might be nicer is maybe if I could put these labels next to the slices of pie. So you want to make sure that you have this design is the ribbon that you're on. So it says chart tools are a choice between design and format. So on the design one, all the way over at the left, there's add a chart element. And so most of the choices are grayed out. So we only have a couple of choices that we can really use here. But the data labels right now is set to none. And what's cool is if you hover over these, it usually shows you what they'll look like. It doesn't look like it's doing that for me today. Um, so we can certainly click on these. You can see what they each look like. So those are all centered around the middle, which is a little hard to read. Um, you can put them outside. The one that I really like to use is this one that says data call out. The reason I like this one is that it puts the name of um, the category and the percentage next to the slice. So I don't have to keep looking down at the bottom to go, oh, orange is biological sciences. Oh, yellow is education. So it puts it right next to it. Um, so that's kind of my favorite uh, version of those. And then if I have that, I don't really need this stuff at the bottom. And this is called a legend. So if I go up to add a chart element, I go down to legend and I can pick none. And then that gets rid of that. And I'm just left with these data columns. All right, so there is a pie chart for you. Come back in the next video and we'll look at some bar charts.